In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use the Fourth Armory template and mandrel to recreate copies of the US 69 caliber round ball and buck and ball cartridges. So to get started with, you're gonna need paper. And what I like to use is uh, this wrapping paper that comes on a roll. Uh, you can get it in any big box home improvement store. It has the consistency of newsprint and it's a nice unbleached brown paper. So to get started, you're gonna take the template and your paper and a sharp razor knife and keeping your fingers out of the way, you're just going to cut out the paper. And of course, you can cut out multiples at one time just by folding the paper over multiple times. But for our purposes here, we're just gonna cut out one. So that's the paper for making a 69 caliber US cartridge for uh, round ball or buck and ball. So to assemble the cartridge, you're gonna to need to have a choking board. And uh, this is just a scrap piece of wood that I've secured a dowel in, and there's a piece of string tied to it with another dowel that I can pull on, and that's called a choking cord. You're also gonna need some string. In this case, I'm using three-ply linen, which is similar to what they would have used in period. And uh, you're gonna need your, your cartridge paper, and, and this is where the former comes into play. So to use the former, you're going to lay it on top of the paper with the rounded end of the former pointed towards the long end of the trapezoid. And you want it to be about a half inch or so away from the end of the cartridge. And then we're going to roll up the cartridge tube. And it's useful, you know, when you're eyeballing this and you're looking down along this edge, you can see when the edge of the paper is exactly in line with the what you can see of the edge of the mandrel so that makes it real easy to get a nice straight roll i'm going to want to roll that up nice and tight and then that's what that looks like you can see the end of the of the mandrel peeking out from inside there and then we're going to take our choking cord and we're going to wrap it around the end of the cartridge where the where the mandrel ends and you're going to put your finger over the end and pull the string tight and that chokes the end of the cartridge. Then we're gonna take our string, and this is a little bit different from other um, cartridges in that uh, you don't cut the string until you're done with uh, the, the sewing up of the cartridge, so to speak. And you'll see what I mean here. So you pay out just enough to be able to do an overlap. You wanna pull that nice and tight, and then we tie that with two half hitches. And then you cut the free end of the string, but you leave the other end secured to your end of twine. And this is specified in the ordinance manual. They explicitly say you don't cut the cord until you've finished with the manufacture of your cartridge. All right, so to start with here, we'll do a, a buck, I mean, a, a round ball cartridge to start with. So the nose of our cartridge is already nice and round. And now we can take a it's 0.65 diameter round ball and place it inside the cartridge and then we just have to choke it so we're going to or rather we're going to tie it off you put your mandrel in blunt end first and then to tie off the cartridge you make a loop like so and then you come around your loop like so and then you just place it so you turn it over and place it where the end of your mandrel is, and you pull it tight, nice and snug until it seals off that compartment where the round ball is. And so you can see we've now got two half hitches. There's a single line of string that descends from the nose of the cartridge down to the divider, and then we cut that. And this is uh, very similar to what you see in surviving examples such as those shown in uh, Dean Thomas's round ball to rim fire. So to finish the cartridge, you remove the mandrel, and next we have to charge the cartridge. Now in the percussion era, it was 110 grains of musket powder. In the flintlock era, it was 130 grains. 
And the reason is you need the extra powder for priming the pan of a flintlock cartridge. So we will put our powder down inside the cartridge. And then the next step is to finish the cartridge in the usual way. So we will pinch the body of the cartridge until we find the level of the gunpowder and then crease the tail at sides like so, fold it over like so, and then fold the sides of the tail in towards the middle. And you give those a good crease, you fold the tail back on itself, and then down along the side, and give it a pinch to hold its form. So that is a 69 caliber round ball US style cartridge. So the same template is used for making uh, buck and ball cartridges. So to do that, we'll take the same piece of paper that we had cut out before, and we will form it in the same way as we did before. So once again, we roll up our, our cartridge on the mandrel. We choke the end of the cartridge with our choking cord. And then we take our cord, wrap it one time around the flower, pull it tight, and then we use two half hitches to complete the end of the cartridge. Then we cut off the free end, once again leaving the other end still attached to the spool. And by doing this, there's, there's no waste, right? You, you only cut it when you reach the end, and except for the little bit that you required to hold on to while you were tying it, you know, there's no waste. All right, so for um, buck and ball, it's a little bit different. I like to put the blunt end back in and flatten that up a little bit. So for buck and ball, you're going to need three 0.3 diameter uh, round balls. I like to use, uh, I'm just using some Hornady um, buckshot here. And it's 0.31 in diameter. So you'll take three of those and drop them down the hatch. They will self sort themselves in the bottom down there and make a little triad. And then you take your round ball, 0.65 diameter, and down the hatch it goes. And then you put your mandrel back in place. Notice you don't have to choke each compartment separately. The string will do that for you as I will demonstrate here. And you don't have to flip it over and yawn and, and like a lot, so a lot of people show what you're doing. All right, so here's how you do this with the multiple compartments. So each compartment is set secured with one half hitch. So to set, secure the buckshot part of the cartridge, you just make a loop, flip it over, come down to where the buckshot ends and pull it tight. And then to finish on your last one, you make a loop, you go around the loop, you flip it over and you come down to where the bottom of the round ball is and you pull that tight. And now, just that easy, we have secured both compartments for the buck and ball cartridge. So the three buckshot are down in the bottom and the round ball is on top. Again, as before, we're going to charge this with 110 grains of powder, musket powder, for a percussion arm, and it would have been 130 grains for a flintlock. So to finish, again, you pinch the body of the cartridge until you find the level of the powder and crease them. Fold the tail over like so. Fold the sides into the middle like so. Crease those. Fold the tail back on itself and down along the side. And so here we have a 69 caliber US cartridge for round ball and buck and ball. And as you can see with the trick that I've demonstrated for how to use the thread, 
and to make your knots uh, without having a free end to work with, it's very fast, not fidgety at all. In fact, you could argue that making uh, smooth bore ammunition might be easier even than uh, expanding ball ammunition. There's no internal powder chambers to worry about. There's no lube to worry about. You just roll your tube, put the bullets inside, and, and uh, cinch them off. That's it.